Innovation on the Edge with Microsoft Edge is a weekly podcast that explores the cutting edge of internet innovation and pop culture trends. Each week, we'll dig into how people are currently using the web to innovate, notable ways in which it's evolving, what its future might look like, and how we can create the future together. Welcome curious creators, disruptors, and innovators to Innovation on the Edge. How has social media affected how you discover new music? Is it through your favorite music streaming app or watching 10-second videos of Gen Z kids doing trendy dances? The music industry has witnessed a rise in democracy in the 21st century, both in terms of how artists write and record their content and how we as listeners consume it. In the last year, many artists who topped the Billboard charts seem to come from the social media sphere. Joining me today is Whitney Phillips. She's a Grammy-nominated songwriter and vocal producer who's written songs for Justin Bieber, Ariana Grande, Christina Aguilera, Celine Dion, and more. And I'm curious to get her take on the current state of the music industry. Here to give us the tea, please welcome Whitney. Welcome to the show, Whitney. Thank you for having me. I love it because we're talking about right now how we're both a little anxious about the world opening up. And both yeah. we both work in the music industry, and it's sort of, it's hard to get our bodies and minds back into it all. I actually don't know what what the world's going to look like after today in California, but yeah, no, it's been it's we're transitioning back into our normal quote unquote normal lives and I'm just like, "Oh my god, like it's just an adjustment, you know? Like we were just saying, such an adjustment going in to the pandemic." And of course, it's it's going to be the same, you know, coming out of it. Sort of. But then it's like, but the music industry has changed so much. Yes. And so yes. it's a weird thing where we're like, OK, we're going back into it. But like, what do what can we expect? So I guess well, right. first, I kind of want to just kick things off with you talking about your journey in the industry. And I'm so proud of you because you've had such a huge year. Thank you. So Thank talk, you. So talk about your journey and especially in the last couple of years through the pandemic, like why have these last couple of years been so oh important my God. for you? Last couple of years. Like I can't yeah. even believe we're saying couple of years because um, it, it kind of feels like months. Mm -hmm. It feels like it's gone by so quickly. Um, but yeah, I mean, I've been I've been a songwriter, a published songwriter for almost 10 years. And wow. I yeah. Um, and, you know, I'm on my second deal with Sony now. And, um, you know, I had a, a pretty steady career and things were going good but I had yet to kind of crack the top 10 and have a big moment like a number one or you know get a song on radio um so yeah the second the pandemic hit we switched over to zoom sessions and pretty much like my first uh within my first like three zoom sessions I wrote stuck with you with Oh, you know, just Justin Bieber, Ariana Grande. Just no a casual. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and so it was very unexpected, but it just ended up being the right time, right place, right song, and just became a moment. And yeah. I mean, it's 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 so cool. And Open I think, you know, we saw, we've seen the music industry change so much in the pandemic and, right. you know, the songs that were going viral, whether it was on TikTok, social media, but like, I guess, right. and, and you talk about writing stuck with you, but did you have to adapt to the way you wrote music because you're trying to cater to this new industry at all? Um, yeah. I mean, it, I think it was interesting because I didn't have, you know, when you're out in the city and you're you're kind of in the songwriting circuit and going from studio to studio, you hear things in passing and you get um, an idea. It's like the rumor mill, you know, mm -hmm. and you kind of, you get a sense of what people are looking for. And then when you're in your house, you're just getting like a direct line to your management team telling you what to write. Or I don't know, I feel like the information is a lot, it definitely narrowed and became a lot less. Um, but no, I mean, we were still very like privy to what other artists wanted. Um, and, you know, it was stuck with you. You know, we were, uh, Scooter had reached out to one of the writers and specifically asked for this moment, like do a quarantine song. And so I think in, in that respect, the pandemic helped us because yeah. it kind of it slowed us down and made communication even more direct and more like, hey, I can't do a meeting with you. Let me pick up the phone and call you. And that phone call really yielded this entire, you know, stuck with you. And then the whole moment that came after. So, I mean, it's it's bizarre for me. Like I. I definitely am on the good side of the pandemic. I'm, I'm, I have a little guilt because <laughs> I'm like, you know, I'm having a great year in my career, and it's like it's weird to say that to people, and and especially people outside of the music industry, because you almost feel like, 
I don't know. You're just a little guilty because yeah. it's been so hard for everybody else. But what it ended up doing for me as a creative is just really giving me the space to do what I've been trying to do for a long time. How great. Yeah. And I feel like well, with Stuck With You too, seeing it go viral, because the thing with it, too, is that um, it was all over. It was like TikTok challenges. And we saw a lot yeah. of that. Those are the songs that went viral. So for you, observing it from your angle and seeing it blow up how it did right. go viral in a big way, what was that like on your end? Um... I mean, it was kind of right when TikTok was really popping off. I mean, it had, I think Savage was before us. I think it was a couple months before us. Um, and I remember in our session, Gion, who I co wrote it uh-huh. with, he, I remember him saying in the session, oh, I can just see the TikTok video to this. Wow. And then we were like, it just, when you got that visual in your mind, it made it more exciting. Mm-hmm. We were like, oh, like I, you know, the romance of the song started to take shape. And it when you kind of start to see the music video or the visual of it now, I guess, with TikTok, just the short little visual, which is like our new music video, I guess. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> um, then, yeah, it just kind of uh, it gave us more incentive to write something that was like that we could, you know, cater to TikTok. And, and that's so weird to say, but like that's where we were at that's- when we were – TikTok was blowing up. Like Savage was out – People were doing their dances, and we were like, okay, let's, like, cater to this, you know. We obviously wanted to write just a great love song and do make a great song that would do well, but... Yeah, that was in the back of our minds. I'm not going to lie. <laughs> but that's the thing is that is where the music industry yeah. is at right now. And I think it's one thing for a Justin Bieber, Ariana Grande song to go viral, right? Okay, fine. But then right. it's now I think we live in this world, and I'm curious to get your take on it, where these unknown artists who aren't right. signed, who no one's heard of before, post a song on TikTok and it goes viral. And now they're on the on the top 10 of the Billboard Hot 100. Right. So what's your take on that <laughs> and how social media is really like – building this next generation of artists yeah um you know it's bizarre to witness because i've been in i've been in the industry for a minute and so i've seen a lot of different phases of how music comes to the light um and how things get on radio and just knowing the backstory of songs um you know i think that i think the labels were really smart the second they saw tiktok starting to take off um, to actively kind of curate these moments for their artists. I mean, I think TikTok is, um, you know, to us or to people not in music, it looks like everything is kind of organically happening. And, and but really, I mean, these are, for the most part, the some of these moments on TikTok are like heavily curated uh, moments. Mm-hmm. You know, like the label is approaching TikTok or TikTok is approaching the label or management teams and being like, hey, take advantage of the fact that like you could have a viral moment with this song and then kind of curating the dance. And, you know, um, so it's definitely different than from just putting a song out and um, just watching it climb kind of the more like traditional way for sure. Well, it's exciting, too. I think that that's an interesting take on it, too. But then there's also these DIY artists and the world we live in right now is that you can just create your own music online you don't need a label you don't need a manager and then you post it and and it's like consumers decide what goes viral right yeah i mean yes yes and no i think that there is like um i mean just to kind of give the tea yeah i I love it i actually love this because i feel like it's not what people are expecting to hear no 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 and i think that that's nothing is what it seems in this city you know like but perception is reality that's our industry but that's um i think the reality is i think labels are too smart not to capitalize off of something so money making as tiktok so i think we've gotten to the point where um there's it's a joint venture you know so there really are no accidents um but of course like I mean, of course, there are people that unexpectedly come up, but they just happen to have support through TikTok and the label, if that yeah. makes sense. I think it's hard for just a complete unknown that has no base or no anything to just um, put their – it's possible, but I just – it's still very hard. I think you need a, a little bit of a machine behind you, if that makes sense. Interesting, because, you know, I've had conversations with people that are like, do you think labels are worried? <laughs> I don't think they're worried. I think they're rich. <laughs> How, yeah, true. <laughs> But how's the record label responding to the fact mm-hmm. that it feels like or it seems like or the perception of is that these artists are just like, you know, bored in the house in the house board mm. that, you know, that guy, mm. they, that his story is just that, that he just right. posted something. But you're saying kind of 
it's potentially that's not the case, maybe. I, I think there's partnerships yeah. uh, at this point. Um, but that being said, I mean, I don't think that they've um, – TikTok is its own machine. I mean, there's people that are going to come up from that. And if, if they build their own following and do their own thing and somehow the label, you know, doesn't convince them to sign a deal, like, they'll take off. Like, uh, or they have the potential to take off. So I think TikTok, in a way, it's, is becoming its own label. I, I think on the on the flip side of it, just because you have – a um, well-curated moment or you have a massive fan base on Instagram or TikTok or whatever, it doesn't always guarantee um, a successful song. Mm, Yeah. I still think that there, as much as technology has taken over and, and, you know, building your socials up can really yield – success for for you in the music industry. I still think that there is something to be said for the right song yeah. at the right time totally. with the right artist. And um you know, if the pop gods don't bless you, like you're not going to have your moment totally. and it's no one's exempt from the pop gods, you know what I mean? <laughs> the like pop it, gods. it has to be Who special. Are they? <laughs> Who are they? Yeah. And how can I go to dinner with them? <laughs> I know, right? Yeah. <laughs> well, what would you say about um uh, do you think right now it's a good time to be an artist or a bad time to be? And, well, I should rephrase that. Do you think it's a good time to be an artist and a songwriter and or a songwriter? Or do you think it's like the worst time? Because I think there's two sides to it. Oh, it depends what you're doing it for. I mean, yeah. <laughs> I mean, it's always a good time to be a songwriter. Um, uh, interesting question. But do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. It's like, yeah. I feel like on, on the one side, it's like never before has there been a time where you have everything's at your fingertips right you can just like right. put the music up you can um you know find an audience but then on the other side there's so much competition because of that yes right now yes um i'm i would say i would have a little i'll probably listen back to this and be like why didn't you say that but when i hear you answer or what you ask that question i'm a little confused because it's a really trend uh transitional time right now yeah. I feel like things are changing so um I think it's a great time to to be an artist because I think that there is if you are a hustler and you know how to network and build yourself up on a social platform um I think and you're really talented I think anything is is really possible um and and uh the if the quality of your music is there, I think anything is really possible. Um, as a songwriter, I am I can attest to the fact that literally anything yeah. is possible. Like I was wearing pajamas, and the next week had a number one yes. billboard. So mm-hmm. like I'm I'm not limiting anybody or anything um, in the music industry. Um, wow, I don't know. That's a really good question. It's is interesting, it, and I don't know that there's there's not a right answer. I just was curious to get your yeah your I, opinion. Yeah. I think I think it's a good time. I think uh-huh. that um, people are also, as far as being a songwriter, I think that people are more information is coming to light about how we work and how we get paid and all that. So, which is a whole different conversation. But there's a lot of great things changing for songwriters and um, just kind of coming to the light. We're getting we're starting to get great conversations going. You for talk ourselves. Ab- you talk about the industry transitioning. What is mm-hmm. that transition? What's the biggest transition? Uh, I think happening? basically what we're talking about, like how people pop off and find their success, and and what um, what artists fly off the shelf and which ones don't. And as a writer, which which projects do you attach yourself to? Mm. Which artists do you um, you know do you believe in, but then also believe in their trajectory and their pathway to to radio or to success so um and a lot of that's changing you know you i think as a songwriter you take in to account a lot of other things than just the music yeah um depends what kind of writer you are i'm very business minded (laughs) myself so um i like making money and having success as much as possible so i you know i want to i want to attach myself to an artist that looks like they um they have some footsteps carved out for them. That's interesting. That's kind of a good lead into my next question because how would you say artists kind of riding that wave of a viral social moment, how do mm-hmm. they how do they find that staying power or build that staying power? Totally. Um, this, this is also a really great question. I um, Kind of like what I was saying before, there's a lot of people that have these social 
networks and the um you know their fan base that is uh, that is diehard and loyal and it always translates to everything that they put out and then there's these artists that have you know big followings and it doesn't translate mm. and they put out music and nobody really cares because they they're confused on their identity and you know they put out this single but they go to their TikTok or they go to their Instagram and they don't really seem like an artist they seem like a celebrity or just like a uh people are confused as to what they do a little bit yeah. so they kind of lose people's attention versus I think like an Olivia Rodrigo who oh is gosh. like that slang album. that album. all of us it's, i can't car yeah like, we could have came out i'm like why do i feel like i'm 15 again What's driving past your ex's house Literally. with your driver's license it's hilarious <laughs> yeah no it's, it's a full moment you know um but i think what she has done differently is that she's she's really an artist mm-hmm. like she has this this fan base and this following from things that she's done prior but she's really um she's she has a very specific narrative that she's running right now It's simple and it's impactful and we're fixated Mm. and she's an incredible talent, but it's like, she's, she's not doing the most. She's just doing her and kind of telling us a story, which I think is what people crave out of artists, Mm. not necessarily the artist that has 50 million followers and 14 slashes behind their name because we're like, what's the story? So so you're saying for an artist to have staying power, it's like really figuring out who they are yeah. and what they represent and not, you know, and, and, and maybe staying true to that sort of uniqueness of that that makes them unique. Absolutely. Right? And finding something that just connects, which is, um, it, it can, you know, for Olivia, I think it's her, her breakup and how she's telling us it's great songs revolving around it, but a very simple narrative that we're all, that's relatable that we're like, Oh, this is great. You know, from, for, for another TikTok girl like Meg, like it was her energy that Mm. she came in with. It was this still relatable kind of like nice but naughty dance that we could all do at home, you know, but it was safe enough to still do with our moms around. Like she just had something that we like wanted to be a part of. I'm curious to get your opinion on this based on what you've already said. With the industry changing before, Mm -hmm. it was very much ruled by these like major labels that dictated everything. I think artists are standing up to labels in a way that we haven't seen in a while. Okay. Um, And finding financial success by not signing deals anymore. So if if we get enough artists that are smart enough to build their fan base and know how to put music out and make money without the labels, which I think is starting to happen, Mm -hmm. owning your masters, you know, Kanye, that was a big discussion that he brought to the table. Um, I know a lot of independent artists um, that make an insane amount of money Mm. because they just know how to hustle their shows and, you know, they, they, they know how to be their own label. So I think as the information is pouring out literally now, Mm -hmm. I think it'll be really interesting in the next, like, couple years to see what happens with deals and what what happens with labels and the role that they take. But it's shifting now. I wish I had a more, like, educated answer, but I I feel like I need more time to kind of see how this shakes out. I think what you're saying, more than ever now, artists and songwriters do have more power than they've ever had before absolutely songwriters artists aren't aren't afraid to speak out so kind of talk about that and how how now artists and songwriters are feeling like they can stand their ground and own and or speak up for what they deserve i guess right um like i was saying before there's a there's a lot of really cool important conversations coming to light we have a band of songwriters um right now leading um an initiative called the pact which is really interesting um my girl Emily Warren and Taylor Parks and um, just heavy hitters like Justin Tranter and Ross Golan, like they're they're um, starting this initiative that's standing up for songwriters, saying, you know, we want to get paid a fee, we want people not to take our publishing, and we want an um, a, a fair enough trade when artists come in for our publishing, which is kind of a normalized thing now. So that's like one thing that. Um, one conversation that's being had to kind of advocate for songwriters but there's um yeah i mean i think writers are starting to realize how much success artists are having um and how 
much we're getting robbed yeah. by the by the labels. Interesting. Um, you know, especially with this whole conversation of people tapping into our publishing, I think that's a, been a big mm-hmm. uh, thing for us. So, I I think we're starting to stand up for ourselves in a way that we haven't before. Um, but it's it's hard to navigate because there's a hierarchy to this industry, and as much as instrumental as we are to the process of making music, unfortunately, writers haven't always been prioritized as far as um, getting them paid and getting them the credit that they deserve. Which is crazy. It's uh, Yeah. I mean, it's absurd. I mean, streaming narrowed how we made money completely. Mm. And we're kind of catching up to making things fair for us retroactively. The labels are sorted. For the most part, the artists are sorted. It's time to sort the songwriters in the way that we deserve. And do you think, what, do you, what does the future look like for songwriters in the music industry? Is it looking positive? Do you feel hopeful? I, I do feel really hopeful. I, I think that there's always hope. Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, I think that there's really awesome, powerful people speaking out right now. And I think we're getting a lot of respect, a lot more respect from artists and, and managers. And they're, they're taking notice to what we're saying. Um, and our understanding our value. And this mm-hmm. is a, a, a becoming a really normalized thing now to ask for what we deserve and to, you know, kind of buck up when somebody comes for our publishing or when we're not given a fee or whatever. And five or ten years ago, you know, they, you would get completely ignored or you would be sent an email like, oh, they're lucky to be on the project. Oh, gosh. I mean, that's, yeah. that's just the truth. So uh, I think it's changing for the better. What's good is that the way people are working is changing. There's more freedom. Um, I think we've all like honed into who we are as creatives a little bit more. So I think the music is like really good. Yeah. Like I think the content is pretty phenomenal. I am hearing like fr- like songs that my uh, friends are writing. And I'm just like, wow, you've never written better songs. Like, I, and, and they're like, oh, you know, and just kind of like the experiences that people have um, been through through the pandemic, I think, has opened up people creatively mm. in a way that's like was very important and really needed, especially like definitely with songwriters, but even artists, just the struggles that they've gone through and the rise and fall of like expectations last year yeah. and not being able to ref- perform I think has made them creatively just better yeah um so that to me is what is cool about the industry right now I need writers (laughs) to get paid more writers need to be getting the credit that they deserve on Mm -hmm. their songs we pour into um people's projects like they're our own you know like literally like they're our children and it's it's really time I think for labels um to kind of give us what we're asking for and and make us more a part of the process, Mm. if that makes sense, especially monetarily speaking. Love that. Yeah. How does social media affect the way in which artists take off these days and what demographics drive the trends? Um, I'm, I, I mean the younger generation for sure. Like I think the, the Addison's and I mean, they're just like, they really just know how to give the people what they want and like <laughs> make something on TikTok where it just can go viral right away. Um, but I think it's also like anything that's interesting um, can take off, which is kind of cool. Like I feel like there's no t- uh, TikTok is not uh, just for one demographic, even though like the younger generation is doing it. Like I just saw the other day this like the moms in the street. Have you seen this? Mm mm. Oh, my God. What is it? Adding it to my list of why I'm not on TikTok. (laughs) But, like, no, it's these, like, moms, like, in the suburbs. And they're doing these, like, dances down the street. And they're, like, decent dancers. Mm. And I'm just, like, my friend sent it to me. And I could not stop watching this. And I was, like, wait a minute. Like, it's, like, a, you know, 55-year-old woman in Ohio, like, dancing on her street. I watched it for hours, but I'm hooked. Totally. And like, I think it's just like, it's like authentic content, right? So people that are just yeah. posting things like, that's why Olivia Rodrigo has gotten so massive because she's just telling her story and being authentic. So it's people that are posting stuff yeah. and just being real. And then... Um, and it's t- anything that's shocking or yeah. that, that we haven't normally seen. 
I think is you can just captivate people in 15 seconds of something just kind of rare. Totally. And, you know, eye popping like Susan in the street in Ohio. <laughs> How does the future of the music industry look for you as a songwriter? Do you see it evolving even further? Getting on TikTok tonight. <laughs> it's happening. <laughs> I've had a change of heart in this yes. podcast. Um, what the pandemic showed me is like how we make music has completely changed. Um, and that to me has been the biggest thing. Like I'm so excited to make music and I'm so genuine like the quality of my life has like bumped up Mm -hmm. I never thought I would say that coming out of a pandemic but I have more time in my day everything I do is like more deliberate wiping everything away and like having a year and a half of some solitude and silence did a lot and it makes me it's made me prioritize different things and and get a really good sense of like what matters to me um so everything that comes into my world right now is there because i want it there and i know it should be there um so i'm it's given me uh more freedom to just like have to build a career that i that i want for myself and i think people i think the world took notice to that love you different the record that that just did on justin's album i was in seattle explicit was in miami Mark was in Los Angeles and like that's and now it's like you know it, it's we'll see what happens but yeah. it's like it landed on one of the biggest most prestigious pop projects amazing you know what I mean and if we can do that from like our own space then I feel like it's just an exciting time yeah like anything's really possible you know anything's possible I feel like new creators are coming out of the woodwork because they can totally and I'm, I'm excited about it me too thank you so You're much for hanging out oh I love you you're the best. best this is great talking music I'll talk music with you any day all day I'll see you in Miami I'll see you in Miami <laughs> <laughs> thanks thank <laughs> you yeah. I'd like to thank our guest, Whitney Phillips, for joining me on Innovation on the Edge with Microsoft Edge. We'll be back next week with another episode exploring more internet innovations, pop culture trends, and how we can create a better future together.